12. It's been a really good conference. I've really enjoyed myself, so thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, when Kent approached me for this conference um, some weeks, months ago, um, I think he was surprised I, I was willing to come out. He said, aren't you really busy? I said, yes, but you know what? You guys are the future of our cities. And so um, it's one thing to go and give a uh, presentation at the um, uh, Association for Architects or Planners, but when you come out and give a, a presentation to students of planning or architecture, you know that you're going to have an impact on the future. I'm sort of now the past, as I was listening to my, my uh, credits there, my uh, resume, I realized with all those uh, conferences and uh, uh, honors and so forth, I'm really old. So really, resilience is about what you're going to do with the future of cities, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So, first of all, I'd like to say well done. This is an awesome conference. Um, and these are the guys that put it together. Brad Bradford, Ken Hackle, John, Catherine, Matt, and all the others. It's been great. And Mark, thanks for the great photographs, by the way. Uh, so, why am I giving this presentation? Or more importantly, why should you care? Especially since this is the last presentation of the day, and some of you are looking at your watches and probably saying, let's get on the road or go to the pub. Um, there are three reasons. I'm going to look at this because I, I, I usually take a few weeks to put a presentation together, but um, the uh, organizers said, would you please bookend um, some of the things that were learned out of the uh, World Cafe in your presentation, so I've moved some things around so I can't just do it from memory. Um, there's three reasons. One is, I think right now, you guys are going to be planning for the new normal. I, with, with all due respect to the panel that just spoke, I think the panel that spoke is a panel of experience. This is the world of planning that's been happening for the last 50 years. I, I, I don't in any way mean to diminish it, there's huge experience, but the planning that you will have to do is the planning between what you just heard from these very, very experienced and talented people is transformed into something that is different because you will be planning an environment that's different from their environment. You'll be planning an environment that's going to have stresses and, 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 and shocks that are going to be environmental, political, economic, the likes of which my generation haven't seen. And you're going to have to be dealing with that. So I'm hoping from my past experience and my looking into the future that I can give you some insights of what that's going to be. And it turns out that through World Cafe, most of those ideas have emerged. Second of all, it's to provide you with a conceptual framework for understanding some of the challenges you're going to experience. And third of all, I thought that I would bring to the table today, or to the podium, uh, strategies, 10 strategies that you will be able to consider as resilience building strategies. They're all strategies you'll probably be employed to use in some other capacity as municipal planners or consultants or developers. But, there, but you can keep in the back of your mind that they also will tend to build resilience into the cities, communities, neighborhoods that you're planning for. So that's, I think those are the three reasons why you may want to pay attention till the end of this, um, hopefully. So the agenda for today, first of all, I want to talk about um, sustain from sustainability to resilience very briefly. What is resilience? We talked about that at the beginning of uh, World Cafe, and I think Thomas Homer Dixon did an excellent job an awesome job of explaining the, the sort of background to where the ideas of resilience come from. In fact, all the things that he talked about yesterday are typically the front end of my presentation before I get to the strategy. So um, you're lucky because you don't have to sit through a longer presentation. So, but I'll just review them. A teacher, um, I, I was a biologist, uh, trained as a biologist before I went into architecture, and then I went into urban design after that. I was in school forever. And the, this biology professor used to say, when you're teaching, you should always remember that first of all you have to say it once, then you have to give an example of it and say it again, and then you have to tell everyone what you just said. So I think this, this presentation is really that third time. You heard it through some of the presentations, you heard it certainly evolve in World Cafe, and what I'm hoping to do is maybe sum up and knit together some of these ideas so that none of these should be surprises to you, but I'm hoping that maybe they'll be a little bit more integrated. 
And then um, seven attributes of resilience. You heard them yesterday from Thomas Holden Dixon, but I'd like to just add a couple in there related to urban um, planning and design. And then 10 resilience planning strategies. These aren't the only 10, but uh, they're the, the 10 that seem to me to have the most potential to add resilience without in any way being some, something abnormal from um, typical planning practice. Um, if, if you're going to make change, unless it's revolutionary change um, or violent change, then you have to find ways of doing it within the existing systems um, or modes of the time. So what you're looking for are strategies that may be being used right now for other reasons, very positive reasons, and understand that those also build resilience. So we're going to talk about those, and they all, by the way, you'll see emerged out of the World Cafe. But not every, they didn't emerge from every table, so we'll, we'll talk about them. And then, the most important thing, I think, is five things you can do. So you hear all this stuff, you're at the conference, so what are you going to do about it? And then some questions, if you want. Um, so, sustainability and resilience. Um, when I, in 2001, I remember being very excited to be invited down to San Francisco to clean build um, to give a presentation on how to make hospitals more sustainable. Because one of my areas of expertise is, is um, health facility design. And um, uh, the uh, audience was very receptive, and one of the doctors at the end said, okay, I, I can buy into sustainability, it seems reasonable, you know, we're going to pull back on, on uh, polluting the atmosphere with carbon and greenhouse gases and so forth, and, and um, uh, destroying our environment with these techniques, lean techniques, whatever. But he said um, to me, asked a very smart question, um, it work? He said, but what about the impact we've already had on the environment? And what about the kind of potential for future stresses or shocks coming out of the environment back upon us and our cities as a result? How does that fit into sustainability? And I can't remember what I said at the time. When you folks ask questions of, of speakers, we're on our feet. We're going, OK, let's see. What's the best way to sort of give them a reasonable answer and make sure you don't look stupid? Um, so I, I thought, well, as I, as I left the lecture, that's a really good question. Like, what, what is going to happen? Um, and then um, I remember the blackout of 2004, uh, July, and how much of a shock that was to everyone, that we could lose our power for three or four days. And I thought, you know, this, this environment of ours, this uh, city infrastructure of ours, it's not as robust as we think. That uh, uh, One little uh, power station outside of Cleveland, Ohio going down can rip through, cascading failure, cause cascading failures across the northeastern states in Canada, 45 million people out of power in the States and 10 million out of power in Ontario, I thought, hmm, this is not exactly a very resilient situation. So I think the, discuss the debate right now, or the discourse right now, can't just be about sustainability, maintaining the, the status quo of the environment, or not hurting the environment. Yes, we definitely should not be doing things to degrade the environment, and yes, we've already caused huge um, damage to the environment, which we have to somehow deal with. But we also have to start dealing with the stresses that that puts on our cities. This is particularly important for you, because you people are the people that will, will hold the strings of control as to how cities are planned in the future. So that's, that's the reason why we're talking about this. And that's sort of the, where the word resilience comes from. So you saw this definition yesterday. Um, Homer Dixon talked about it. Uh, just run through it again. Resilience is the ability to absorb disturbances, to be um, uh, changed, and then to be able to reorganize and still have the same identity, retain the same basic structure and ways of functioning. It includes the ability to learn from the disturbance. A resilient system is forgiving of external shock. So that's basically the definition of what resilience is. And uh, 